Hi everybody, welcome to another week of DBT on YouTube. Hope everybody's had a great week um, and that you were able to work on some of those skills from last week, um, being able to take out the trash, uh, getting rid of those, those, those thoughts that just kind of keep coming up and, and challenging those thoughts, as well as being able to do some things that you're, that you're good at um, and building that mastery. Um, so this week we're going to continue on with emotion regulation um, skills and, and kind of finish out that unit today um, so or this week. So you'll be checking in with your individual therapist this week about um, the last of the emotion regulation skills um, and then we'll spend some time to um, do some interpersonal effectiveness as we continue to go along. So the first thing I'm just going to ask everybody to do is just kind of get set in, in your space. Um, grab something to write with. Um, I'll have you be writing some stuff down um, during this. So then you're ready for your individual therapist. So go ahead and grab something to write with um, as, as we're going along today. Um, also look for these skills to come across in your email so you can you can check them out and, and follow along as well. So the first skill we're going to talk about is please and as we know DBT loves acronyms so please is a skill um, kind of going through different pieces of taking care of ourselves so I'll just kind of read through what each letter stands for um, and then um, we'll kind of go through each of those and, and specifically two of them so please the the P stands for treat physical illness so the P comes from physical so being able to take care of your body um, of course, great now, like going to the doctor is if you and they say if you need to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. So listen to your body, take care of your body, balance eating, E, um, don't eat too much or too little. And we'll go in a little bit um, more on this. Um, the A, avoid mood altering drugs. So staying off non prescribed drugs, um, street drugs, marijuana, alcohol, things like that. Um, balance sleep, um, S is for sleep. Um, so trying to get the right amount of sleep for you, and we'll again we'll, we're going to talk about this one a little bit a little bit further and how we can develop good sleep habits. And the last one E is for exercise. Um, so doing some sort of way to get your body moving each day, whatever works for you. Every person is a little bit different in what they need um, in terms of getting their body moving. It certainly doesn't mean needing to run a marathon. So two of them that we're going to focus on just a little bit more is the eating piece and the sleep piece. So there's a handout coming at you called Food in Your Mood. I love that title. Um, what we eat does really affect our moods. And so even just applying a little bit of mindfulness to that of when you eat certain foods, how do you feel? Like, are you more irritable? Does it make you more calm? I know that right away, if I have something sugary or if I uh, get a soda or something, right away I have a lot of energy and then I kind of feel that crash afterwards. So just noticing that. And so to notice that, we would be applying a little bit of mindfulness to that. Um, so in this handout that's coming at you, um, just reflecting on what, what are some of those things that work for me. Um, so negative examples of some things that can have some negative effects on your mood would be soda and sugary snacks, like I just said. Um, tired and irritability come from those things. Heavy fatty foods, french fries, chips. I love chips, so sometimes that um, is not a good thing. Um, greasy foods, they may make you feel a little bit more sluggish. So see if you notice that and what does sluggish mean for you. Um, and caffeine might make you a little bit more anxious or jittery. So just notice that as well. So some positive things. So things that we would be looking for that would affect our mood in, in more of a way that we're looking for uh, would be the complex carbs. So um, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, salads, they give you more of a slow and steady energy. Um, and then the proteins. Um, so dairy foods, they'll help with some energy. Fruits and vegetables, of course, will boost energy. Um, and and really figuring out what works for you. And, and I think that takes a lot of mindfulness of understanding how each food, and it takes time. A lot of us don't, I mean, you know what, we just, we're just eating. And, and sometimes we just do that. Um, but just noticing if your mood is, is shifting up and down, like noticing what it is that you're doing to, to put in and to fuel your body. Um, notice eating too much or too little. Those are some things. 
um, and just start thinking about changes. So thinking about um, food sometimes feels like a really big thing um, and just small things, even if it's just like, I'm going to notice today what I eat and how that makes me feel. Um, start small like that. Um, that's where a lot of, of it kind of falls apart is that we, we do it in this large scale and that's not always super effective. So, and also you can also consult with your doctor or nutritionist if you need more help with the food part, but we know that food does affect our mood. So we're asking in DBT to apply some mindfulness to that. Apply some mindfulness to what do those foods make me feel like? You might even start a list right now of some of your go-to things that do make you feel really good. Maybe you feel really good after you have that fresh fruit or after you eat a salad or nuts or things like that that give you a little bit more energy. So start making that list. And then here's a big one, sleep. Um, on YouTube, if you look on our channel, um, Heidi Waldock did uh, another YouTube about sleep and kind of why we're so tired during this time. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out. In DBT, we also talk about sleep. And there's some real kind of tried and true things that we talk about when we talk about sleep. The first thing, of course, is sticking to a schedule. Um, weekends and, and weekdays, like trying to keep on the, on the same, same schedule there. Um, I usually joke with my, my groups that that's not, I'm not a great sleep schedule person. I don't love the mornings and I love to sleep in. Um, and that doesn't always work. And so um, I know that I'm at my best when I am more on a schedule as well as a routine. So if we think about when we were a little, really little, um, we had a, probably a routine for, for bedtime. And so having that routine, even as we get older, um, having that routine is really important. Not eating or drinking too much before bed, of course, avoiding caffeine too, too close to bed. Some will say like even past 2 p.m., avoiding caffeine. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping, you might try to exercise. Um, and then that continues to make your body a little bit more tired. Sleeping in a more cool room um, so that you can kind of snuggle up with your blankets and you're not feeling so hot. Um, and because our body's natural temperature does raise when we're sleeping. Sleeping, trying to sleep primarily at night um, if that works in your work schedule. Um, dark, quiet space, um, no screens. I know this one's a, a difficult one for a lot of people. So if you're having trouble sleeping, like trying to test out, like are the screens an issue? Um, during this time, we're home a lot more. Some of us might be working from our rooms or doing our homework from our rooms. And so trying to find um, another place to do some of those things, we would like to use our, our sleeping space just for sleeping. Um, and not doing the homework or, or those kind of things. Again, these are things if you're having, having trouble sleeping. Um, and don't catastrophize is one of the last ones. And I like this one. Um, if you've ever had that experience where you just keep looking at the clock, well, if I fall asleep now, I can get five hours of sleep. Now I can get four hours. Now I can only get three. And so we kind of start to, in our minds, kind of take over. And, and that, can be, that can be challenging to overcome. So don't catastrophize. Even just having a mantra for yourself like, I'm here and I'm resting and that's okay right now. I wish I were sleeping, you can validate that. I wish I were sleeping and I'm not, there's something going on. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be here and rest and practice some of that mindfulness. So having a routine for you when you're having a hard time sleeping as well. So that's the please skill. Um, so thinking about how you're doing in each of those areas and where you might be able to improve. And I just touched on the, the, the more of the food part, the balanced eating and the getting enough sleep part, but there's, there's multiple parts to that, that skill. So check in with your therapist about that. And then the last thing that, um, the last skill that we're gonna go through is called opposite action. Um, this is one of, it's a very difficult skills. It's one of my favorite skills just to kind of think about. So the first thing I want you to do is write down these emotions. Just write down the name of the emotions and leave a little bit of a space. So the first one is fear, anger, sadness, shame, guilt, jealousy, and love. Okay. So each of those emotions for each individual person brings up different things 
our bodies and our urges react in different ways. And so there's not, there's some kind of common things that might come up for people. Um, but what we're interested in is what comes up for you when those emotions are hanging out. So taking some time to think about what happens when you're, when you're feeling fear. Um, sometimes some common reactions might be we want to escape or we want to avoid. Um, for myself, when I feel fear, I actually get kind of angry and it might come out in more of a mean way. Like my tone of voice might be a little bit more mean when I'm in fear. Um, anger. What is happening when you're in anger? Common reaction might be to attack the other person, to blame, um, to um, verbally kind of berate somebody. What happens when you're feeling sad? So you're kind of getting that, that idea of what happens for me specifically when I'm feeling those emotions. Because we have to first get clear on how we might react in those emotions. And then what we're going to work on this week is thinking about some of the opposite ways. So instead of, for myself, fear, I've identified that I might get a little bit mean um, and probably a little bit more anxious. So for me, the opposite of that would be taking a deep breath and it might be saying something more calm to myself. So if I'm in fear, I might take a deep breath. Okay, I'm really scared right now this makes sense. And I'm going to figure I, I'm going to work with facts instead. Um, that might be just the opposite for me where I would automatically kind of run to that other that other place. So we're going to take some time and, and work through some of those emotions that um, are showing up for us, they show up for all of us, um, and what our common reactions are, and then what we can maybe do that would look the opposite or having kind of a, a plan for ourselves when some of those emotions come up. So before you, you get on the, your session with your, your individual DBT check-in, write down your common reactions to those emotions that I named off. And then during your session, you can work on, well, what would some of the opposites look like with that? Okay. If, certainly, if you have any questions, please ask your individual um, therapist during your check-in, um, and we'll go from there. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You guys are doing an awesome job. Um, our subscribers have gone up, so thank you for thank you so much for watching um, these videos um, and just your feedback with them. It's been so helpful um, for me to to kind of feel like I want to continue to do them. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, good luck with sleep, food mood, um, as well as thinking about some of those emotions and your common reactions, um, because that's the first step in us being able to, to kind of shift them around a little bit. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you all next week um, and have a wonderful, wonderful week.